So hello, my name is Pablo Golub. I'm working for Cybertech as a senior consultant slash developer. And today I will talk about programming language, Go language, uh, which is uh, young enough, but strong already. And I want to tell you not about the language itself, because you can read it in the manual. And, and I want to, uh, to tell you about my passion about it, why I choose it, because I'm a little bit conservative man. And, and, and to, to, to switch the language or technology, I need uh, a reason for that. Couple of words uh, about my company. Probably you heard already the funny stories uh, from our CEO, Hans Jorgen Schönig. We are a worldwide company, but if you want to hear one more funny story, just ask Hans about the Mauritius office. Some of our clients, some of our services. And if you don't know, the PostgreSQL is still the most advanced database in the world. And that is why. OK, so uh, today uh, I want to introduce you to the Go language itself. I want to tell you about the integrated development environments and tools available for this language, uh, the drivers we should use, what exactly useful extensions we have here. We will talk about the ecosystem around the Go language. And uh, later we will cover the uh, testing, um, uh, the, the testing process for, uh, for Go programs. And if we will have some time later, I will try to uh, make a demo. OK, so uh, I list here some, um, uh, uh, some um, reasons why the Go uh, is uh, not the worst. I mean, it's a good choice. First of all, it produces the native binaries. For every platform you have, you got the one and only uh, binary, and you can build it on any platform. Meaning, if you are working on Linux, you can still produce binary for every output platform you have. Meaning, Windows, macOS, etc., even Android, whatever. The Go language itself is very simple. And that means that uh, one can learn it in a couple of weeks. It's really fast. I mean, it, it's, it's a fast compilation. It's not like C1, so uh, you can use it uh, not only on, on your local machine, but, only, but, but, but also on the uh, cloud environments, which is really cool. Uh, it has a rich standard library. Uh, it has a powerful concurrency control, uh, not only with the mutexes or critical sections, but also, but also with the uh, channels and, and, and messages. And it's really easy to learn. It looks like C probably, uh, but it, it, it's, it's, it's really easy just for me. And uh, it has a very comprehensive tool set. I will show you some of them later. Um, here, uh, the slide with the, uh, the, some of the uh, results of the survey in 2020 made by the go.dev uh, portal. So the question was, uh, in what area you are using Go language. And the 
mostly 70% was about uh, web programming and the half about databases. And uh, the, real, uh, the real thing here is that desktop GUI, 9%, but the thing is that the Go language itself has no GUI library, and I'm wondering what that means, I really, so. Um, here, is, here are some, uh, here are some uh, products, known, well-known products written in Go language. First of all, it's Kubernetes, uh, then it's Moby, Hugo, probably you know the, the framework for building static, uh, static websites, Grafana visual visualization platform, uh, etcd, key value storage, and so on. But what about uh, PostgreSQL world? Uh, I, uh, this, this order is uh, by the uh, number of stars on the GitHub, so I just uh, filter the uh, projects connected with PostgreSQL and with the Go language and rate it by st uh, star count. Uh, so the first one, the PGWeb is a client for PostgreSQL, Stallone is a cloud manager, then two separate operators, one by Zalando and one by Crunchy, WallG, archival and restoration tool, PG Center by Data Grid, uh, then PG Watch monitoring tool by Cybertech, PG Timetable scheduling tool by Cybertech written by me, and the funny tool, PG Flame, which allows you to, uh, to uh, represent the explain output in the form of uh, flame graph. If you know, if you want to find more projects written in Go, you can uh, visit the link here. There are a lot of them. So, what exactly IDEs and tools one should use nowadays? Again, let's see on the Result we have res results we have uh, in the uh, go.dev survey in 2020. So uh, the 2021 results will be av avail available in March of the next year, and I think that this code will dominate. But right now we already see that 40% of uh, developers use VS Code as their default. Uh, ID, then we have Goland and IntelliJ by JetBrains. By the way, JetBrains uh, released new lightweight ID called Fleet. Uh, I didn't try it yet, but uh, I think that this is the answer to the VS Code domination. We will compare them later, maybe. Uh, then we see Veeam, NeoVeeam, Emacs, and others. So what about my environment? My environment, I am using VS Code because I tried to use Jet, JetBrains product uh, because I used a Python ID, PHP, and WebStorm before, but I didn't like it. The debug process was cumbersome and, and, and VS Code is Work, working smoothly without any issues. Uh, I added Go test util utility, which, which, which just the Go test with colors, so it's, uh, it, it uses some coloring of the output of the test running. Uh, then, of course, I'm using linters. Here it's a Golan CI lint. It's not a linter itself, but it's a linter running. So you just say what kind of linters you want to use for your project, and it downloads it and run it against your code. Very handy. Uh, Top nine is the plugin for artificial intelligence uh, code completion. Go releaser is the utility to produce binaries, packages, and, and all this stuff from your code. 
Uh, I use it locally just uh, to test it, if it's everything is okay with my code. But for the releases, for releases we use GitHub Action and the standard standard action with the Go releaser. Of course, I'm using PostgreSQL as a testing target, and this uh, Git port IO site, uh, I found it two weeks ago, and it's extremely cool feature. I, I, never, I never thought that I will be so excited about the container-based, cloud-based, ready-to-code developer environment. So you as a developer, uh, describe what exactly environment you are using for this particular project. And later, any person who is, pro who, who is opening your GitHub repository clicks the button and the same environment is opened in the browser with the same tools, with, the, with, with everything, and they can proceed, they can program, they can test your code within their own browser, even they never knew about Go language or PostgreSQL or whatever. So this is just ready environment in their browser. Uh, in our projects, we are using GitHub integrations. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that the GitLab and Bitbucket uh, have their own integrations. I just never try them. So the first one is a dependabot. This uh, integration checks automatically the dependencies. Uh, you have the versions of the dependencies your project has. So, for example, if some library is updated and, and you didn't notice that, uh, then this bot will create a pull request in your repository, allowing you to check compatibility, uh, what's new, the full change log. They will, um, it will run all tests, and later you can decide, do you want to update your code to use the latest uh, library? or just postpone it later. Another, another action is a code QL. Um, this uh, action provided by GitHub uh, runs some tests to analyze your code for security uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, it, 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 it's young for a Go language, but it's major for C and, and, and other languages. Uh, our own actions are usually divided in, in three categories. First one is a build and test, which is which mu must uh, execute must be executed after the every commit or uh, after the, every push or uh, pull request. Uh, then we have a special GitHub action called release, which will run the Go releaser, will produce the packages. Will uh, will collect the change log from the comments and will will produce the the, the whole this release uh, uh, stuff. Uh, it allows you to notify some communities in on LinkedIn or uh, send notification to the Telegram channel or a lot of. And the last one is the Docker action. It runs uh, after every push, uh, so it produces the Docker images uh, for every branch, including uh, master and, and, and every branch we have in our repository. So if you want to provide, if you want to provide some quick fix for your client, you just provide, the, provide your client with the link to his Docker image, and that's it. You have immediate response. Now about drivers. First of all, I, I'm not a fan of the ORM. Um, I think that it's not a pure evil, but I don't see the reason why we should use it, especially uh, when people are uh, ig ignoring the SQL itself. I can understand when uh, 
that there is a choice behind it, but, but, but nowadays, from what I see, every young developer and uh, are just starts from the ORM and do not understand the, the, the database behind it. That's not good. Okay, so about drivers. Um, the Golang uh, idiomatic way of working with databases uh, is the database SQL package, which is just a set of database access interfaces, meaning that uh, there are a bunch of methods which we will use to work with a database. To, to actually access the database, we need some underlying driver. For example, for Oracle, it would be one, for MySQL, another, and for PostgreSQL, nowadays we have two drivers. First one is libpq, and another one is jxcpgx. Uh, standard de facto libpq was uh, long enough with us, but right now it, it's in maintenance mode, and no new features added, and so if you want to go with the, uh, with the new project, you certainly need to choose PGX driver. Plus, a PGX driver can work in the compatibility mode with the database SQL. So if you need some specific components of your application still working with the standard database SQL packages, you can, you, you can still use PGX, but with the a uh, special standard leap um, package. So how should we choose where to use the standard approach with the database SQL, so it, idiomatic way, or using PGX? PGX uh, meaning that it, it was created specifically for PostgreSQL, as we used to in uh, C library, libpq or, or some, or some, uh, some, some others, meaning it's, it's not using the mindset of a Go language, but rather the mindset of a C library. So if your application is targeted only against PostgreSQL and there is no any other components of your system that can depend on the database SQL package, you should go with the pure PGX. But if your system is complicated enough or you need to use this bunch of interfaces provided by the database SQL, you still want to use PGX library, but you want to go with the special adapter PGX standard leap. Uh, why I want to use the PGX library without, without the database SQL standard approach? Uh, first of all, PGX supports all and every data types of PostgreSQL. Uh, it does automatic statement prepare, pre pre preparation and caching it can use uh, query batching, uh, a lot of funny things, and, and most of them. So for every standard type, it uses binary format, meaning that your uh, traffic is less in, in, than in case you are want to use the text representation. Then it supports copy protocol natively without any issues, but if you want to use copy protocol in, uh, w w within the database SQL approach, uh, you cannot do it easily. You can do it uh, with some kind of magic, but, but I don't recommend it. Uh, another another, uh, another function functionality of uh, PostgreSQL which is implemented Natively is a listen notify. You cannot do listen notify using the database SQL or 
libpq. And of course, native support for HStore, JSON, JSONB, and large, uh, large objects. Okay, so how, um, how these approaches are different. If we were using the standard database SQL package, uh, we are starting from uh, the importing uh, database SQL package in the first line, and then we need to import the implementation, the driver itself. And this is, you can see in the uh, last line of the import clause, we are importing PGX standard library. And then we do the usual simple things. We are calling sql.open, we are uh, using PGX protocol instead of Postgres in case of libpq, and we have uh, database, uh, db object, and we have error. db object is not a connection itself here, is the pool of connections, because that's how the architecture of the database SQL uh, package is, is, is written. So, uh, right now, after the error checking, you can run a lot of parallel workers and they all can use this DB structure simultaneously and this DB will produce a physical connection to database each time it needs it and will free it or close uh, after, after some timeout. Um, if we, if we want to talk about libpq, so the way it was that if you call, after you call SQL open method, there was no physical connection made. Just pool was created, but not connection made. And usually developers were simulating it by sending some simple uh, query, just like select one or just semicolon, to, to force the puller to open the physical connection. Why is that important? Because you want to know if your credentials are correct or not. In the case of PGX, automatically, uh, automatically after the uh, pull creation, the ping is sent to the server and we know immediately if uh, the connection is established or not. Um, Nothing, nothing complicated uh, after that, so we are just using DB, we are querying the row or querying the rows, and we scan uh, values, so very, 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 very easy. Uh, in case of PGX, pure connection, we are not using the database SQL package anymore. We are using native PGX approach, and here, the connection, the con object, is the real physical one connection to your database. It's not pool anymore. So you cannot use it simultaneously from many Perl workers. You, you, you need to, to, to split it using. And that is, that, that's good for, for some applications. If you need just one connection, you're fine. Nothing bad with it, but you need to remember that the PGX library uh, creates a, a physical connection, a real connection, not a pool of connections. Uh, the, as you can see, that uh, uh, the the code itself is pretty much the same as previous one, except we uh, use some context which we are passing to the methods which is very convenient way of signaling the PGX library that we want to, to kill something. If our uh, context is uh, uh, timeouted or, 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 or is not valid anymore, uh, we just can immediately close the connection, go out and, and, and do whatever we want. There is no need to signal somehow uh, 
But if you want to use the uh, pool, there is special package in the PGX set of packages, a PGX pool. So the same approach here, instead of PGX one physical connection, we create a pool of connections calling PGX pool dot connect method. And we work in with it the same way as in, in in, in previous situation, but we remember that this is the pool of connection and we can run, can pass it uh, to the several workers in parallel. Okay, so uh, about useful extensions. I think that people are choosing ORMs because, because they are lazy, first of all, and the second reason is it's, it, it's, too hard to serialize, deserialize, deserialize um, values from and to database. And in this case, we have this Gmoiron SQLX package, which is very handy. It's written especially for database SQL standard package. It enhance, enhances the standard uh, object, standard interfaces with uh, some special methods, just like must open or must exec, meaning that must, if, 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 if something is happening inside this function, we do not produce error, we just panic and, and kill the whole application. Uh, that's not the way programs should work, but maybe somehow. Another, and, and in, in this uh, SQLS package, I think that most important methods are the get and select. Uh, let me show, show you an, exa an example how this works. So let's imagine we have a structure called place and we want to fill this Golang structure with the database values. So we have country which cannot be null. We have city which can be null. We are using special type for it and we have uh, a telephone code which has telcode name, telcode column name in the underlying table. And we can tell our, and we can tell our um, uh, package that we will use uh, the, this, uh, this uh, column name. So what we do here with SQLX, we are calling a special method called queryX it returns enhanced uh, rows or row object, which has this uh, pretty method struct scan. So you don't need to enumerate every column and get every value and, and, and check for a, for a name, check for a null, check for a, for a correct uh, notation, anything. It will do it for you. In this example, we, we are using the same place structure described earlier, and we want to use slice of these uh, place structures, so several of them. In this case, we just can get, we, we can use SQLX method get, get. So uh, if we have just one row and we know about it, it will fill our structure immediately with all values we have uh, returned from the database. If you, if you know that we have more rows, we can use select method, which will fill the slice of the objects with the information from rows we, get, we have. And we can, we can not only use the structures with these methods, but um, ordinal types just like integer or string or, or slice of strings. So we just, if you want to know the count, we can put the result into the integer. If, you, if we want to uh, have a list of names, we just can select it to the uh, slice of strings. And it's very convenient. For PGX, uh, there was no such a library and that was, um, and that was not very convenient. 
but uh, maybe a year, year and a half ago, uh, there was developed a package called Scanny, which do the same thing as uh, as SQL X uh, is doing for a standard package, but the Scanny thing is uh, written in in more um, abstract way, so you can make it work with any kind of database-like interfaces. And one of them is, of course, PGX. So, as you can see, the semantic is pretty much the same. We are using select method for, to obtain the slice of uh, objects. Okay, so here we go, testing. There are several approaches for testing. One, one would be to test your code against the real server. Uh, another one would be to use some mocking libraries. And the third one is to mock not the server, but mock the protocol of the server. Uh, it's, this is very rare when you want to do this, but there is, uh, there is uh, uh, some, there are some, uh, uh, there are some libraries that allows you to do that. For example, the pgmock and the cockroach go. As you know, cockroach is written uh, in Go language, and it uses the PostgreSQL wire protocol. So there is standard Cockroach Go testing server, and we can use it for our applications too. Uh, for uh, I mean the, the 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 most convenient and the most usual way, I think uh, it's the, 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 it's using the mocking libraries. There are two mocking libraries on the market for PostgreSQL database. If you are using standard SQL package, you should go with Go SQL mock. And if you are using PGX, you probably want to try my PGX mock, which is the, the same approach to testing uh, as a Go SQL, SQL mock, but written specifically for PGX. How we do testing? First of all, we want to uh, we want to uh, describe the interface. We will use why that because we don't want to to use the real connection, the real server, but we want to pass instead of the real server our mocking library. That's why we are defining the interfaces and the method of our mocking library are the same as the methods of our uh, native package. Uh, then, then we have some kind of, I don't know, function for, for testing. We want to, to begin transaction, then we want to insert, uh, update something. If everything okay, then we want to insert something. If we got the error, we want to roll back. If, 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 if everything is okay, we want to commit. Usual situation, nothing special. How should we test it? As you can see, our record starts function accepts the PGX iFace interface as the first argument. So the trick is that instead of the real connection, instead of the real pool, we will pass our mocking library. As you see, as you can see, we are using PGX mock. We are creating the new connection, new mocking connection, uh, new mocked connection. Uh, then we we are trying to describe to our mocking library what we are trying to achieve. So we are expecting begin, we are expecting the start of transactions, then we're expecting update, and we want our mocking library return some result, then we're expecting insert statement, 
and we walk, and, and we want our mocking library to return some result, and then everything okay, we are expecting Comet. This is one scenario, positive scenario, successful scenario. Then we want to check the uh, results of this test. Just like we are calling the, our record start function is there is error, we failed our test. Uh, if the, the last line, mock expectations, expect, expect, expectations were met. So this line tells the mocking library to check if all of statements we are expecting for are executed. For example, if we execute just update and we commit, there is no error, but our logic waits that there should be one more statement. And in this case, our mocking library tracks if all statements were executed and if some of them were not or some parameters differ, then that will produce an error. And the unit uh, test case for a, for a fail, pretty much the same, but we are telling that, okay, if we are expecting insert with the arguments two and three, instead of, um, instead of some result, let's produce some error. And after we produce some error, we are expecting rollback. So the same here, we are calling our record stats function, but now we are waiting error, it should return error, and then once more we are checking the if all of our expectations were met. Okay, so what we have here. First of all, Go is a popular, popular and uh, language, it's it easy to learn, it's well scaled, it's young enough, uh, according to the hired portal, uh, Go is considered to be the number one most in demand coding language, according to the 2020 survey, probably. Uh, as you saw, the half of developers use Go to work with databases. Uh, you can use whatever editor you want, whatever IDE, it's fine. And as soon as uh, Kubernetes is written in Go language, probably every operator for Kubernetes will be written in Go language as well. We see it uh, just like in examples for operators for PostgreSQL by Crunch and Zalando. And I think that will um, make Go language even more popular because Kubernetes is extremely popular uh, nowadays. Uh, Go is very flexible. You can use whatever driver you want. Uh, LibPQ is still working, but it is in maintenance mode, so probably you want to start with the PGX. Uh, we have a powerful tools <laughs> and, and integration with the most famous uh, rip Source control, uh, source control, what they, services just like GitHub, GitLab, and Bitbucket. Uh, and the, 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 the cool thing about Go language is it's backward compatible. So the API may grow indefinitely, but there are no chance that the first release the first version of Go language uh, will be broken by these new versions. And that's very cool. If you have any ideas, please let me know about them. You can find our projects in our GitHub actions in our everything about the Go language and on our repository. And you can find PGX mock library on my repository. Thank you very much.
And if you have any questions, I can answer them. And if you want, we can try to do some demo with this Gitpod IO uh, thing. And I will show you how to, how to spin up the development environment uh, in the cloud with the PostgreSQL on it, with the tools on it. Okay, I knew that. <laughs> How much time do we have? Eight minutes. So, okay. Um, do you know what happened when you press dot button uh, on GitHub repository? Which button? Dot. So, okay, uh, right now um, we have a PG timetable repository opened and I will press the dot button and automatically GitHub is opening the uh, github.dev environment in which, uh, in which the VS Code browser, browser version of VS Code is available and you can start edit and investigate the project right away without waiting for, without, without knowing how it, how, it, how it operates or whatever. The only drawback here is if I want to use a terminal, it's not available. And that's why we want to use the git port IO As you can see, I have a special git pod green button here, which means that if I will hit it, we will open our uh, uh, git pod environment right away. So let's try to do that. I hope it will be fast because I used it not so long and, and there must be some pre-built image to load fast. Meanwhile, I will show you how that works. So in our project, we have two files, gitpod yaml and gitpod docker file. Gitpod yaml uh, tells, can you see? Gitpod yaml tells our gitpod IO service what exactly environment to use. First of all, we are saying that we want to use special image which is stored in our .gitpod.docker file. Then we want to describe tasks which, which should be run on the start of our environment. Right here, I, I'm using the PSQL to create some user for testing purposes and to use the database for testing purposes. And as a last task, I am just checking that everything is okay and, and and the Postgres is running. Next task is I'm trying to install uh, the go to Golang tools I need for this. Here is uh, Rekel go test. Then I can tell what exactly extensions I want to add to the VS code. Here is the Golang extensions. And the, and the last part is, uh, in, in the last part I can describe what ports should be open. For example, if I'm using some React uh, application or some, uh, I don't know, web UI, what ports should I open to be able to debug, to, to interact with this environment? So the Gitpod, Gitpod itself has the Docker file for PostgreSQL, but it's uh, outdated, it, it is using the uh, standard Ubuntu package, which is 12 right now. And 
that's why I decided to write my own Docker file. First of all, I used the in installation instructions from, from the postgresql.org. Uh, uh, then I then I then I start my server. I'm checking if it's available. Then I want to create some uh, users before that. Then I want to create a database for these users. Uh, for this user, the the user Git port is the default user for the development environment. That's why I want to create a Postgres user PostgreSQL user Git port, so we can log in immediately without adding some uh, users or, or, or rules to the pghb conf file. And what we have here is. Here is our environment. We have we have terminal here. Let's start to connect to PostgreSQL. We are in. Can you see it? Let's try to know version of it. It's 14. And we have all of our all of our uh, source files here. For example, let's check Gitpod YAML. We're and the the most interesting part that we can we can spin up as many these environments as we want to. For example, if I have several issues in my repository, I can spin up several environments and each of them will check out its own branch with this issue so I can work simultaneously on the several branches and later I can use the VS Code uh, VS Code source control to update the commit my uh, my changes and to produce pull requests etc uh, etc et and another another way of using gitpod io is the training purposes so for example i want to show my colleague how how i work with this project or how to fix something or how to 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 do something in the project instead of setting up the whole environment on his machine or her machine i'm just providing the link to this environment in the cloud, and we are working on the same environment, on the same source base simultaneously. And I think that's very cool. Thank you.